What's up guys, Steven here, and I wanted to release a video about my brine shrimp. Um, Lucas Bretz did a video on my brine shrimp tank while he was at my house, and it seemed to get a ton of positive feedback. I did get some questions about it. Um, some people seem interested in doing a tank, and like he said in his, I believe it was in his live stream, or maybe it was in that video, having a tank of brine shrimp, they breed on their own, it's like a culture tank, and I don't have to hatch brine shrimp eggs anymore. I bought some on eBay, got the culture going, and now it just repopulates on its own. And I use the adult brine shrimp for my um, dwarf pea puffers. And then the baby brine I put in my guppy tank, um, the baby, the guppy fry, and then the adult guppies love it. You know, it's, it's live food, so it's, it's great. Um, there's a lot of videos of people doing brine shrimp like hatcheries and all that stuff So I don't really need to show you, you know, how I hatch them um, I did my own method, you know, a lot of people use like a two liter bottle or they actually buy a hatchery kit um, I'll show you what I made and like how it works and you'll get the idea but I kind of want to go into details about my setup and What I use to feed them how I feed them stuff like that and we'll start with the water. So the water has to be salt water. And I used, it's uh, Instant Ocean is the brand I use. I get this from a local um, salt water store. It's like maybe a quarter mile from my house. It's called Matt's Corals. It's in Gahanna, Ohio. Um, and I mix this for my salt water tank, my 14 gallon nano salt water tank. When I do water changes on that tank, I just make, make extras to do a water change on the shrimp tank, the brine shrimp tank. Um, to make the water, I use this refractometer for salinity. Um, you just basically mix your water, put a couple drops on it, and then you look through it, and it's got a, like a bar graph in there. And um, I believe, so I do 1.026, and that's what I use in my salt tank, and that's what I use in my um, sea monkey tank. I'll just call them sea monkeys. Um, <clears throat> so add that. I have a heater in the tank. It's set to, so there was some misinformation. I have it set to 78 degrees. Because of the this light that I run, I am now running since even Lucas left, 24 hours a day. I never turn it off um, now, and I've just kind of seen like if that made a difference because it was running like 20 hours a day. Running nonstop, no difference on the tank. I don't have like any noticeable difference. So I just leave it plugged in now. I took it off my timer, and it just runs, and everything's working. But that light does generate quite a bit of heat, and it's right up against the glass. So I took a digital temperature of this water and during the day when the AC is not running in the house, this tank's getting up to like 84 degrees. And then when I'm home and my automatic thermostat kicks on and the AC comes on, this tank's like 79, 80 degrees. So I don't know if that's going to make a huge difference if you try to do it, but I figured I'd give you that information. And when Lucas was here, we noticed there was a bunch of eggs on the top edge of the glass. Now, when brine shrimp are very happy, they're live bearers. And when they're not very happy, they drop eggs. So they've been dropping a ton of eggs. So maybe maybe the tank's overcrowded and that's why they're dropping eggs versus live bearing. I'm not sure, but either way, I have a ton of eggs. And Lucas pushed a bunch of them down. and. And I just left them be. I didn't ever mess with them. Well, Lucas pushed a bunch of them down to the water. And I just sent him a video to his cell phone that they hatched. Like, there's a ton of tiny little ones in there now. And, you know, it just looks like there's more brine shrimp. So, I just came up with this idea. I got this scraper. It's for, like, mudding walls. It's clean. I went through and I scraped all the glass and pushed all the eggs down into the water. And um, they're just kind of floating around. They're kind of over by the bubbler, um, by the sponge filter, and they're they're cycling around. So another 
24 hours, there'll be a ton more brine shrimp in here that's... And there's already a ton alive from when Lucas was here. So anyways, you make the water, you put them in, you, you hatch some out, you put them in, and then you just let them go. This is what I'm feeding them. It's organic spirulina powder. It's like non-GMO. It's basically, I searched Amazon for spirulina powder, and this is like one of the ones that popped up. And it was advertised for like fitness drinks to add it into like your, I don't know, pro protein shakes or something. Um, so I bought this. I forget how much it was. Um, it's four ounces. There's about that much, about that much left. What I did is I put it in this little jar, and this jar is still pretty full. And I've had this going for six months now without issues. And I put it in this jar just because it's easier to tip some out of this than from the bag. Because the problem with the bag is it's got this like this press and seal and the powder will get in the like the zipper type thing and like it's just a pain in the butt so I put it in the jar and I'll show you how I feed them and we'll do that right now so I don't actually take the lid all the way off but I do it's, it's a little messy but I, I loosen the lid and I shake it and I, I use my finger to hold pressure on it and I just shake a little bit out and then as you tighten the lid back down, more will come out. So I keep it over the tank. And that's it. And it just puts like a, almost looks like a, a real light coating on the top. It doesn't look like much. It almost looks like um, how like on your fish thing when you get that that layer on the top. It's escaping my mind right now. That the biofilm layer. That's kind of like what it looks like, and it's just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Um, one of the mis I don't know if it was a mistake, but when I first started doing it, I was putting in a ton because I didn't know if it had to, like fill up the water column. But I just put in a little bit, and it like filters through and. They do their thing, and you do get the mulm on the bottom. So, like, it's just this green mulm, and I just leave it. Um, in the past six months, I think I've vacuumed out this tank once, and I didn't really want to do it because, you know, the, the brine shrimp are so small, I didn't want to suck them out with the python. So I just basically made sure the tube was always at the bottom, um, created the suction and then just made sure I didn't, you know, try to suck anything up. And, um, I've only ever done that once other than that. So it's only ever had one water change and maybe that was a 50% a water change in six months. Other than that, I just top it off with fresh water because the salt is not going to evaporate like the water does. So you just have to add regular water back in. Um, I will check the salinity every... Well, I've only ever did it once, six months, so it's really kind of set it and forget it type deal. And yeah, it just works. And live foods are great for your fish room. So it's one of those things where I had a 10 gallon tank sitting around. I had a spare heater. I had a spare um, sponge filter. And the, you, I use a sponge filter because you're not supposed to use an air stone because the airstone bubbles are so fine that the shrimp can actually like get stuck in the bubbles and so I just put the um, sponge filter in there because the bubbles were bigger I'm not even trying to filter the water um, in fact it's just completely clogged with algae and stuff now which I mean it's fine they're eating off of it but it's not filtering anything by any means uh, if I didn't have the sponge filter I would probably just put an airline into the tank with nothing on it and it'll give out big bubbles um, to oxygenate the water and keep stuff moving around but yeah that's it it's super easy you can grab a 10 gallon tank at Petco or um, Pet Supplies Plus on their dollar gallon sale for 10 bucks you can get them used and honestly for 10 bucks I would just buy a new one that way you don't have to worry about trying to clean it or if it's going to leak or anything um, I don't really like buying used small tanks because I don't think it's worth 
the hassle of trying to clean them and then go get them. Um, so for 10 bucks, just buy a new one. You could probably do it with a five and a half gallon tank. Um, I just had really good success with a 10 gallon, so that's what I recommend. And it doesn't take up a bunch of room. And I just keep it here in my kitchen because that's where I set it up and I was making my salt water and it's just been there kind of ever since. And you know, if I'm, I'm cooking the dinner, the, the stove's right here, you can look over and watch some sea monkeys. But uh, yeah, so if you like this video, please uh, tell me you like it and leave me a comment if you have any questions or concerns about the setup. And I'll look forward to making another video for you guys. So thanks. Postscript. I meant to show you the hatchery I made. And I made it out of just spare parts I had when I was building my fish room. And I just, let me get down. This is a one and a half inch tee that I was using on my drain line. A Fiji water bottle that I cut the top off of. I drilled a hole, stuck an airline in it, put some uh, hot glue on it to seal it. I used the the tee to hold the bottle and then it lets the airline come out. And then I just have a ball valve on the airline to control the flow and it goes to an air pump. And that's it. And then I just set it next to the tank and use that to prop it up. I'd fill it up to about here with the salt water, put in the eggs and let it go. And 24 hours later, it was all hatched out. And then what I also liked about using this is that I would pop the line off, leave the ball valve and line attached to the tank. And I would take the whole thing over to my guppy tank and open the valve to drop the brine shrimp into the tanks. And a lot of people will talk about washing the brine shrimp before they feed them. I do not do that, and I've never had a problem. And people were talking about, you know, it could raise, you know, levels in your tank. It, it's never touched my levels in my tank. And in fact, it's salt, and salt has a ton of beneficial minerals in it for not only your fish, but your plants. Um, I think if you check out Aquarium Co-op, he had a whole video about adding salt to your tanks and how beneficial it is. And, and like treating like bacterias and um, even like ick and stuff like that. But there's so many minerals in it that it's fine. It's, it's really good for everything. So I don't wash them and I, you know, using the tube and like literally just opening it and letting the brine shrimp, you know, come spilling out. I was actually putting salt water into the tank. I mean, it's not a bunch. You're talking an eighth of a cup of water, if, if less than that. And um, no issues at all. Uh, and then on my breeding tank that gets, oh, it gets water changed. Well, now it's about once a month. You know, a lot of people will water change out every few days or once a week. You'll never see any issues with that. Um, but for when I feed my puffers, I feed them the adults. So I use a net and I scoop them out so there's not standing water, but they're coated in salt water and no issues, even with the puffers. So, yeah, you don't need to rinse them. Don't think you have to because you don't. Anyways, thanks, guys, and I'll catch you next time.